Hi, good evening. I'm Pastor Butch and Rilly, and welcome to Digital Gospel. It is a 30-minute word of encouragement from the Word of God, brought to you by Community Christian Center. I am here in the house, actually in the rooftop, and I just want to greet all my family, my friends, my parents, our senior pastors, our co-pastors, and members of Community Christian Center and uh, Christ Faith Fellowship all over the Philippines and abroad. I want to greet you all. Maayong gabi inin yung tanan. For the past three weeks, we've been talking about the series of Commission to Evangelize. And we will continue with that. From last week, we talked about Jonah. And this week, I'm going to talk to you about Moses. Before we begin, I would like to open in prayer. Let us pray. Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful evening that you've given to us. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings that we enjoy every day. Lord, despite the crisis, despite the challenges, we will continue to praise your name because you alone are merciful. You, are Lord, are, are faithful to us, your children, dear God. Lord, I pray, Lord, your word will be magnified, and Lord, that your name will be adorned, dear God. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings that we receive day by day, and we give back all the adoration to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. Now, we continue on the series of Commission to Evangelize, or our calling. Now, this evening, I'll just cite you an example. When we buy a gadget or appliances or a vehicle, it usually comes with a manual and this manual is very important to be able to know how our, our appliances work or how to uh, connect it to the power outlet or find a ways to troubleshoot it if in case it doesn't work now our, the Bible is our manual it is a manual wherein we have to read so that we can be able to troubleshoot the different problems and trials that we face in our lives. Now, my question to you this evening is, have we read our manual? Or do we only read our Bible every Sunday morning? I'll leave that question to you. Now, with our situation today, we can learn something on how a man and a nation can acquire freedom in a land of four centuries of slavery. Now, the Israelites lived for 430 years in Egypt, bound in slavery. And this evening, evening, I would like to talk to you about that and of the life of Moses. And we can find this in the book of Exodus, chapter 2 to chapter 12. I know there's a lot of chapters that we have to read, but I'll try to shorten it by capsulizing it in just a couple of minutes so please bear with me now the birth of Moses is found in Exodus chapter 2 and we all know the story that during this time in Egypt they were uh, doing population control and so all the the baby boys were killed now this Moses he was put in a basket and in this basket he was floating in the river and looked after by his sister Miriam and while he was floating in the river he reached the, the bathing area of the princess and when the princess opened the basket he saw this adorable baby boy and Miriam said would you like to have this baby boy if you want to I can have someone look after him. and so the princess uh, paid the mother to look after uh, Moses until he grew up and when he grew up he took him as the prince prince of Egypt now Moses lived his life uh, as a young man as a prince and he lived his life but deep down in his core he knew who he really was he had that soft spot for an Israelite because he was an Israelite he knew who he was but he, he couldn't find out what exactly it was. But God was preparing him for that time. Now, when I was young, no, I'm not a prince. But when I was young, my father was a, a pastor or a missionary. He always wanted me to follow his footsteps. But 
the Lord was preparing my time. And the Lord is also preparing a time for you. Now, when you look at the life of Moses, you can see that Moses knew who he was. He even killed an Egyptian because there was a time that the Egyptian was very cruel to an Israelite and he buried it. And there was a confusion about it and he was scared. So he fled the splendors of Egypt to be away from Egypt. And this was the time in Exodus chapter 2, verse 23, which says, During that long period, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out, and their cry for help because their slavery went up to God. Now, the truth is, God hears every petition and prayers of His children. Now, if God hears His children, the Israelites, way back then how much more now God hears our cries our cries of anguish our cries of prayer Lord help me the Lord hears it and during that time in Exodus chapter 3 verses 11 to 15 it says it says here that God calls on Moses this is a very interesting part because he is this is the part when Moses thought that why is this bush talking or not being burned? But he was in front of God. God was talking to him in the burning bush. And if you read the chapters from 11 to 15, God was already calling Moses to prepare the Israelites to get out of Egypt. And he's going to be confronting Pharaoh. Now, Moses was scared. Of course he would be scared. Who, who wouldn't be scared if they would be talking to, to Pharaoh? And he would be pleading the lives of the Israelites to Pharaoh. Now, Moses was scared. He was not a good talker. Or was he confident? He was scared. Like any of us. Sharing the word of God can be very nerve-wracking. Because you don't know how to start, how to talk, how to create a conversation. But Moses had that similar feeling and God talked to him and he answered his prayer as well. In Exodus chapter 4 verse 10 to 12 it says, Moses said to the Lord, pardon your servant Lord. I have never been eloquent either in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. The Lord said to him, who gave human beings their mouths? Who gave them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and teach you what to say. Now it's just like us. We may be insecure. We may not know what to say, how to create a conversation. What is the first verse? Where is it found in the Bible? But that's okay because God will help you only if you ask. The point here is, are you available are you willing to take this challenge to share to the word of God to other people? Now, Moses was called and he was not alone. God gave him a companion. God gave him Aaron because he knows Moses was inadequate. He was scared. He was unconfident. And so he gave Aaron as his companion. And you can find that in Exodus chapter 4, verse 14. And then Pharaoh when 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 the thought came to his mind that I will be speaking or pleading to Pharaoh, it was an overwhelming experience to Moses. Who is Pharaoh? Pharaoh was an easy man to talk to. He was superior. He had power. He had a heart of stone. How many people of us do we know is that kind of person? Or has that kind of person to talk to? We all have our giants in our lives. But there is never a giant too big that God cannot overcome. I tell you, my friends, we just need to find those pharaohs in our lives. And we just have to confront it with the help of Jesus Christ. Now, um, during the time when, when Moses went, just to cut the whole story short, jo uh, Moses and Aaron went to Egypt to confront Pharaoh and they pleaded 
they asked Pharaoh, let the Israelites go so that they may worship the living God, which is Jesus Christ. And, and, and Pharaoh's heart was hard. He would not allow. And these are the different um, wonders that God has given or showed to Pharaoh. And I will just take it briefly one by one. And number one was the rod of Aaron became a serpent. But it was counter fought by the magicians of Pharaoh. They too had had uh, rods that made uh, that became serpents. But one thing with the rod of Aaron, it became a serpent that ate all the other serpents. And number two, there was, um, you can find that in Exodus chapter 7 verse 12. Second is the river of blood which killed all the fishes and living creatures in the rivers and in the ocean. It's in Exodus chapter 7 verse 20. Then it was followed by frogs in Exodus chapter 8 verse 6. Then there came a million lies or uh, in Exodus chapter 8 verse 17. Then there were flies that swarmed the lands of Egypt which is in Exodus chapter 8 verse 24. Then there was the death of livestock, the cattle, the herds, the goats, the oxes, the horses. You can find that in Exodus chapter 9 verse 4. Then there were boils, but still Pharaoh's heart remained hard. He would not allow the Israelites to get out of Egypt. And you can find that in Exodus chapter 9 verse 10. Then God sent hail, thunder, and fire. You can find that in Exodus chapter 9 verse 23. Yet Pharaoh would not budge. Pharaoh would not budge. Then locusts plagued the lands of Egypt. And you can find this in Exodus chapter 10 verse 13. Then darkness came upon Egypt. In Exodus chapter 10 verse 22. And you will see... I'm, I'm, I'm giving this to you briefly so that we can get to the point wherein how did Moses come about in overcoming all his fears. Now these are different plagues that plagued on Egypt. And if you were there, if you can imagine yourself being there, you too would be scared. When the rivers become blood, when you have boils, when you see people with boils and your cattle are being are killed. But the last one, is the past over. This is where the firstborn would die. It's in Exodus chapter 11 verse 6 and also in Exodus chapter 12 verse 29. And you can see the Passover and God gives an instruction. He gives an instruction on how every Israelite can protect their home from this pestilence. And I will read it to you. What is the meaning of this Passover? Now this is the last plague that God sends to Pharaoh because Pharaoh still would not allow the Israelites to get out of Egypt to worship Jesus Christ. And it says in Exodus chapter 12 verse 27, it says, Then tell them it is a Passover sacrifice to the Lord who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt and spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. Then the people bow down and worship. Now, we are also in this kind of crisis. And they bow down and worship the living God. Why don't we do that in our respective homes? Because we too are facing this kind of challenge, this kind of pestilence. Something we cannot see, but is taking lives. Not just here in Lapu-Lapu, not just in Philippines, but in all over the world. Let us learn to bow down. Let us learn to humble down. Let us see and, and sought help from our Creator, Jesus Christ. And I believe, brothers and sisters, when we bow down and we worship the living God, He will hear our cry and our petition. We all desire freedom. But before we can acquire it, we need to follow God's instructions. And God gave instructions to the Israelites on how to survive, how to, to work on this, this Passover. And you can find that in Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 to 20. 
to. It's in Exodus chapter 12, 1 to 20. And you, there's a certain instruction wherein you can, you have to paint uh, the blood of the lamb in the door panels of the doorways. And this is very important because God gives us a clear instruction to be able to overcome certain trials. The question is, are we listening hard enough with his instructions? Now, if you look at it in Exodus um, in chapter 12, you see how God took Pharaoh's son. He took his the eldest son and that changed the decision of Pharaoh. My friends, if you, you think about it, human as you are, if you were Pharaoh, why do you need to undergo so many plagues to allow Jesus Christ to move in your life? He had to suffer so many plagues, not just him, but also his family, also the whole Egypt had to suffer because he was stubborn, he was arrogant, he was filled with pride. But sometimes we need these plagues in our lives to make us see something different. And so freedom was acquired. It says in Exodus chapter 12 verse 51, it says, And on that very day the Lord brought the Israelites out of Egypt by their division and freedom was acquired now the meat of this the learning from this story um, I want to give you there are nine learnings that I, I want to point out and I want to stress on these nine things number one God listens and answers our prayer whatever problems you may have whatever uh, situations that you are in right now you just have to kneel down forget yourself a bit and yield to the Lord Jesus Christ. Get to know, Lord, give me the instructions. Help me, Father, just like Moses did. He did not um, show himself as a prince, but he humbled down as a Hebrew to be able to be used by God in helping him take out the Israelites out of Egypt. Number two, God uses and prepares people, whether they may be rich or poor, educated or not. What is important there is that you are willing and you are available. It's not about your degrees. It's not about your experience. It's not about um, if you can speak or not, or if you have confidence in speaking. No. But if you are willing to be used by God, just like Moses, just like Aaron, their feet is so uh, so big that they, they think they, it's impossible for them to accomplish. But by God's grace and by God's provision, they were able to do it. Number four, you will always have a companion. You will never be on your own. When God uses you, when God calls you in the ministry, or God uses you in a way that you seem that you are not capable, He will have someone be with you. You are never alone, my soul. Do not walk this life on your own. You learn how to work as a team. Just like uh, us in Community Christian Center, we never run as a person, just by you. We, we work as a team with co-senior pastors. And then, number five, he always give warnings before consequences. The Lord is still just. He is loving, but he is also a judge. But before he gives his verdict, he always gives you sufficient warnings let us open our eyes let us open our ears to the warnings of what the Lord has in our lives number seven he allows pestilence to happen he allows challenges trials and hardships to happen because he wants us to learn that we are not important but what is important is that we listen and obey God in everything that we do in our lives number eight he encouraged us to endure. He wants us to be resilient. The Lord wants us to be compassionate, but be courageous. In James chapter 1, verse 12, it says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, 
which the Lord have promised to them that love him. Let us all endure. Let us stop complaining. Let us not change what we cannot change, but let us change what we can change. And let us have that kind of heart that whatever trials, temptations, pestilence that come our way, we will focus our eyes on Jesus Christ. We will always endure to the very end. Number nine, and this is the most important learning from this story of Moses, he will set us free. Freedom, freedom indeed. In Galatians chapter five, verse one, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm, then do not let yourself be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Brothers and sisters, when you look at the life of Moses, you may think that it is irrelevant to your life. But actually, we can get a lot of learnings when we read the Bible, especially from Exodus chapter 2 to chapter 20. The whole story of Moses unfolds. That is just one part of his life. My friends, we need to focus on how he overcome. He was not perfect. He was inadequate in many things. He was not able to speak properly. He, held, he needed help from Aaron. But he wanted to please God. He, he took the challenge to face the impossible. How many of us are scared to face the impossible? All of us. But we just have to make that decision. We have to make the decision that, Lord, it is my time. Lord, I've been waiting for so long. I want to be used by you. Prepare me for something great. It is not for me to boast, but Lord, that I can bring glory to your name and only to you, Father. And when the Lord hears your humility, and when the Lord sees your heart that you want to be used by him, he will start to use you. And when he uses you, he takes you into that process. He gives you the transformation. And when transformation begins, the results are better than what you think it would be. When the Lord works in your life, brothers and sisters, you will do things that you will not imagine you could do as long as you let God mold you in your eyes. Now, I will end with Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. It says, whenever we are down, whenever when we are worried, whenever we feel that we are not like everybody else, it says here, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. All we need, brothers and sisters, is to have that open connection with Jesus Christ. We need to talk to him, open our prayer life, open ourselves to him. And whatever crisis that we are facing right now, we can overcome as long as we focus ourselves, our heart, willing to accept whatever challenge the Lord gives us, we will be able to achieve anything. We need to humble down. We need to have a heart that is available for God to use, transform, and process. Mga Igsoon, you just have to see that a lot of people can sometimes be um, scared of what is around them. They are sometimes scared of what lies ahead just like Aaron, just like Moses. Let us not have the heart like Pharaoh, but let us learn from the story of Moses. Because once we learn, we can apply. There's always a blessing in learning. And the learning is from the experience that we have experienced. Brothers and sisters, uh, tonight, um, as I come to an end, this COVID-19 is um, giving us fear. It's giving us things that we uh, just do not like to do. We may feel insecure, or insignificant, or we don't know what tomorrow brings. But allow this time of quarantine to focus yourself to Jesus Christ. Pre prepare yourself for what the Lord wants you to do. Talk to your friends, to your family, to your neighbors, to people or to families abroad, or to people that you love. Share to them the Word of God. 
share to them the love of Jesus Christ, the things that he has done for you and for me. Because today is the day, today is the time. And this evening, I would, I would like my son pray for you. Let us pray. Good evening everyone, my name is Chad Edgar Vincent Bantikin Willie and let us pray. Lord, thank you for everything and protect us all and save us all and Lord, ang mga tao, mga every people is protected Lord. This Lord, you're only our Savior and our Savior Lord. This Lord, you protect our President, officers, mga Ma pastors and you protect them, ma military, soldier, doctor, protection worker, and then Lord, the nagtrabaho Lord, this Lord, the bangis at silan Lord, the makatrabaho Lord, this Lord, at agin mga food, ang mga wife food Lord, this Lord, why matakdan ari dili Lord, bless you, na wala sa na coronavirus Lord, bless you. You protect us all, Lord. You protect the President the Lord. You're always in the heart, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything, Lord. You're always in the heart, Lord. You're always our Savior, Lord. You're always in the heart, Lord. Bless you, Lord. 